Welcome in, everybody, to another live edition of 410 Sports Talk. I'm James Haskell, along with my co-host, Glenn Martin. And, of course, as always, DK in the background, uh, drinking a beer as we speak. Nothing new. No, I'm totally kidding, DK. <laughs> it's, Joey, it's like a Diet Coke or something. It's water. It's a seltzer water. Uh, we are excited to be here, ladies and gentlemen. It's officially April. Mm -hmm. uh, it is draft season, hot and heavy. But there's also all kinds of stuff going on around the league uh, for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, free agency landscape is changing and things of that nature. So we're here to talk about all of it. I'm excited to talk with you guys about it. Uh, last week, we did a first round collaborative draft. Mm -hmm. um, and this week, Glenn, I, well, if I understand correctly, unless our, mm -hmm. our wires are crossed, we're doing a three round mm -hmm. uh, draft. And the only thing I want to know is, is I, I, do you have three rounds? Like I have three rounds already picked and uh, I would like to compete. And get I, the, get I, I, I could, I have, I could do three. I don't have it like ready to display, but I have multiple players in each round that I'm prepared to select. Yeah. And what I think is, yeah, we'll go through the simulator. Okay. And then we'll pop up our grades and our players and give our justifications really. And let, let the people gotcha. decide. Okay. Yeah. Fair Pretty enough. Cool. Isn't it? But how you doing, Glenn? I'm doing well, doing well. Like, um, been loving to see uh, what the Orioles have done to start the season. Had the walk-off win last night, which was really fun to watch. And, uh, they were trailing for most of the game and end up pulling that game out, which was awesome. Uh, down right now, but uh, that's okay. There's still time. There's still time to make the comeback. But, yeah, I mean, excited to get into the draft. I, I don't know if you guys saw, Jimmy, I don't know if you saw uh, a couple days ago. Uh, no, Actually, I know you saw. Eric DaCosta did an interview, which I thought was pretty – he was uh, – he was more open than I was expecting him with some of the personal stories that he told and 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 reflected on some of the mistakes he made by he named names, Jimbo. He mm -hmm. named names. He made it very clear who he was talking about in some scenarios. And I, I just found it very fascinating. I, I can't believe he opened up the way he did, but the biggest the 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 thing that's getting most of the headlines is man, he absolutely fried Kenny Young, right? Called him. I mean, coaches thought he was an idiot. Um like how surprised were you to see and if you guys haven't seen go look it go look it up because it's certainly worth a watch it's about an hour long but uh it was a good one yeah no that was that was surprising i mean he obviously felt very comfortable very um in his environment where you know where where he was at doing that event uh but he had to have known once he named the team that everybody knew who that was going to be Mm -hmm. right like that was the surprising thing for me and it was funny because he even had an out and he said the chargers yep. initially and then he said no 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 the rams he corrected himself just to make sure everybody knew mm -hmm. that yep. you know that that because that was the only guy there was no more questions about who it was anymore like who else have we traded to the rams in mid-season it's kenny right. it's kenny young kenny like young. But, but I, but I also agree, right? Huh? How obtuse are you as Kenny Young to walk in your boss's Dude. office and throw an ice cream cone? But you know what, Glenn? This is one of my, I only have a few problems with athletes. I don't have a problem with their pay. I don't have a problem with any of that because look, you are what the people are willing to pay you. That's your yeah. value. I don't have any problem with that. I get it. The open market is awesome. I enjoy it. But. Dude, the entitlement is out of this world. Sometimes a little yeah. out of control for me. Like, dude, you dude. think you're that much of a big deal to walk in your boss's <laughs> office? I can see him doing it. Just slinging an ice cream cone. Like, and it sticks to the side of the trash can. Dude, that, that should, it should just say, like, a, like a wording on top of that. It, should be a, it just says, when entitlement and stupidity have a baby. Yeah. Like, so this dumb. is what it looks like. Kenny, yeah. come on, bro. <laughs> so dumb, dude. Like so dumb. And I love that he told the story. I thought that was absolutely savvy, hilarious. Dude. Like he's like, look, I went from feeling bad about having to trade the guy to feeling absolutely thrilled about it. Couldn't wait to get him out of the office and out of the building. Uh, but yeah, that that yeah, that's pretty stunning. But he also talked about the acquisition of Earl Thomas, and he talked yeah. about how he learned a lot of patience uh because he he didn't show patience in that moment, lost a couple of key guys specifically on the defensive side of the ball, including Terrell Suggs and um, C.J. Mosley. And uh, there was one, oh, Eric Weddle. Mm -hmm. And so he was a bit reactionary, didn't sleep on it, which we all know is Ozzy's motto and, and didn't make any big decisions without at least one night's sleep on it. He, he did not do that. He got reactionary, go out and get the guy. 
because he knew the tape, but he didn't know the player. I could I couldn't help but uh, but help to be like kind of surprised that he named again another name and talked about how that guy wasn't a fit for us personality wise, player wise maybe, but not personality wise. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of surprising to see his openness about it, right? I like it. I mean, I think it's uh, it's cool as a newer age GM. I think yeah. it's, it's – and the other thing, too, is that I feel like it's important just to be you. Like, if that's who you are as a person, that's certainly not who Ozzy Newsom is. Right. Like, if any of you have been at training camp, Ozzy Newsom sits in the very corner over by the garage, and he has an invisible force field around him mm-hmm. that with his eyes say it all. You don't get near Ozzy. He doesn't want to talk to you. He's not mean. I'm not saying he's a mean guy. He doesn't want to talk to you. He doesn't want you to talk to him, right? Like mm-hmm. that's that's just how he is, right? Like it's not that he's a mean guy. He's just got the little Kawhi Leonard to him a little bit. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if Eric's not that guy, hey, at least he's owning it and being true to himself, right? That's true. Can't just you don't want to just be a carbon copy or a clone of yeah. Because if it's not president. you, it's 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 you're not your best self, you know. Exactly. But, and look, I don't know how you would feel about this, but dude, he said he found out he was next in line in 2007, Jimbo, and, and did not have a timeline of when he would actually take the role. 12 years, Jimmy, he mm-hmm. had to wait before he could take that role. We talk about how quarterbacks that come into the league young and how they benefit from sitting behind a veteran. I mean, 12 years he got to sit and figure out what he wanted to do when he got the the main gig. I mean, could you have been that? I don't think you could have been that patient, Jimbo. I think you're taking, I think you're taking jobs elsewhere for sure. <laughs> you might know me a little too well, Glenn, but it. I mean, look, if it's if it was the Ravens, I would be patient. Oh, me, sure. right? Obviously, yeah. oh, I got I'm, you. Yeah, you know, but Eric, different situation, but. Yeah, but we also don't know what his pay was. That's true. But I, they yeah, could have been paying so. him pretty handsomely to hang around. They could have. They could have. Yeah. You know. So I don't know. I mean, shout out to Eric for for playing. The, I think it's worked out, right? Because chances are he's here till he retires. I don't see. You know, he's here as long as he wants to be. So, right. you know, nothing like that, man. And I also think I help. It helps if I'm not mistaken. His wife is from here, and yeah. used to work mm-hmm. for the Ravens as well. I the second part, I don't know, but I know she's from here. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, obviously, I'm sure she wanted to hang around. No doubt. No so, doubt. Yeah. But yeah, no, still surprising. 12 years. That's a lot of life. Whew. It's a long time to wait. It's a long training period. Uh, but I also wanted to get uh, your take. Um, the Chargers do it again, man. They oh get Ben God. Mason this time. Bench Mason. They're take him. Take him. <laughs> You're not worried about. No. No, the the Chargers. No, Glenn, the I was the I was the only one on this show. I never believed in Ben Mason. I never <laughs> wanted to get rid of Patrick Ricard. That dude, no, thank you. No, and then when he went to the Patriots, he was dead to me. Even when he came back, the yeah. Ravens just did it to cut him again. Is that all this is? Or yeah, that they needed was? a camp body, and they said, "Forget it, we're going to cut you again." Because yeah, when he the, walked the, out, he was like, "I quit. Y'all didn't fire me." I quit, and then they they great. were like, "We got to fix that. We got to hire yeah. him back so we can fire his ass." That's right. That's what it was. Yeah, <laughs> no, but I mean, look, good, good for the Chargers. Good luck with it. Um, obviously, he's going to get play with G Row there, uh, and uh, it is what it is. But I didn't want, I didn't want Ben Mason anyway. He cannot hold a candle to Patrick Ricard's game. Let's be honest. Can he? In your opinion? No, of course not. I right. mean, look, I, I, one thing I think we've we've learned also over this off season is that. Patrick Card is going absolutely nowhere. They talk yeah. about him all the time. I heard D- Derrick Henry bringing him up on multiple occasions and how fun it's going to be to run behind that guy. But, yeah, no, that's a different level. That guy, Patrick Ricard is such a freak show of an athlete for what he can do at his size. I mean, obviously, we talk about it all the time. He's super underrated just as an athlete. Like, just mm-hmm. as an athlete. Like, he's a mm-hmm. freak. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely no, crazy. It's insane. I just really quickly as a sidebar to that. Glenn. When you watch the race in October, look yeah. for the big dudes that are running where I'm running because they're the freaks. Oh, Not yeah. the tall, skinny dudes, but the dudes that are like jacked. Yeah. That are like 200 pounds. Yeah. You know what I mean? That are that are running up by, you know, in my heat. Like, not that I'm crazy fast, but to be able to do that at 200 pounds mm-hmm. is just wild. And he's that type of guy, you know? It's just, yeah, it's just insane. Just but the other thing I, I want to talk about is another Raven. 
And that's J.K. Dobbins. He got some bad news today. Uh, went to go visit the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> and they decided they were sticking with uh, Clyde Edwards-Alaire. They signed into a one-year deal right after that, I guess. Why are so, you uh, laughing like a villain? What is uh, funny? I mean, I, <laughs> what I think happened? It's, not, it's not funny. I think J.K. just needs to be here. Like, I want J.K. here in Baltimore. Okay. I do. I want him in our backfield. And, like, yeah. I don't want the, the – part of the reason I'm laughing is because Kansas City Chiefs made the wrong decision. Hurt or not, J.K. Dobbins is a better football player than Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Let's be honest. The yeah. dude is like Monty Ball 2.0. Remember Monty Ball? Oh, I remember Monty Ball. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I feel yeah. like he's just a Monty Ball all over again. And, like, mm, that's not what they drafted him to be. So – um, yeah, they just made the wrong decision. I think Jake has a better football player. I mean, don't you well, agree? I, I, I do think, I think he certainly has the uh, more potential as the higher ceiling. Maybe Edwards Hilaire has the, the higher floor and that he, he doesn't healthy. have the, yeah, at least he doesn't have the, the terrible injury history. But yeah, one thing I will say, I don't think Edwards Hilaire's one year deal means they won't sign JK Dobbins. I think there's still very much so room for JK with Clyde Edwards Hilaire there on a one year deal. So I wouldn't say that this necessarily means that they're out on the JK Dobbins uh party, but look, I, I I'm not I don't know. I don't I don't like the Chiefs getting good players. Right, right. So in that regard, I'm not that mad that he didn't leave there with a contract. I'm hopeful that he signs somewhere where we don't have to deal with them because if he doesn't get hurt, Jimbo, he certainly has a chip on his shoulder that is massive. And I don't, I, I don't want to be on the receiving end of that if he, if he's, uh, you know, in, in the Chiefs' backfield. He has a whole season now. We got to play him in the playoffs, and he's coming out of the back. I mean, uh, uh-uh. I don't want no parts of that. So yeah, he can, uh, he just go sign the NFC, bro. Just go, just go sign somewhere where we don't have to deal or with. Or come you. back to to Baltimore, right? Like, are you still in favor of that? Yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, I guess the. I don't believe JK wants to be here. So yeah. I, I think I'm kind of moving on mentally from him sure. being here. Cause I, I do think the Ravens wouldn't mind having him here, even though I don't think they were necessarily a fan of, of some of the, the, the social media, you know, the, the fact that he was outwardly, uh, he was expressive about his unhappiness at times. I don't think yeah. people, the, the, the Ravens like that, but I do think they would take him back. I don't think he wants to come back though. Well, well Glenn, I got other big news around the league. Big news. Let me hear yeah, it. Big news. Chase Claypool. Did you hear about this one? Oh, my goodness. Did you hear about it? Mapletron? No. Is he yep. out of the league yet? He's going home. Oh. He's, he might, he, he's looking like he's going to play in the CFL. Oh, man. Dude, things <laughs> fell off the cliff quick. How can you him, be bro? that big and that fast and have relative production in the NFL and be disliked as a human being that bad. That's really all it is, right? He must be an absolute jerk. And because I don't think it's, I mean, he, he can't be like a tireless worker, but he doesn't ever look out of shape. So I don't know if it's a work thing. He just seems unlikable as hell. Yeah. yeah. Man, Crazy, look, right? You gotta be likable, man, this world. Gotta be. I mean, his boys still got a job, right? Miles Boykin? Dude, Miles Boykin is going to have a longer uh, a career Crazy to than think Chase about, Gable right? Claypool. That is nutty. When you think about how they burst, how they came onto the scene, how different. Yeah, dude. He Crazy. thought he was the, he thought he was him though, didn't he? he did. I mean, Steelers fans thought he was, they had the audacity to call that guy Maple Tree. To to do any type of relation to Calvin Johnson is Crazy. so outlandish and disrespectful. I mean, whoo. Yeah, that's no. shameful. Absolutely. Uh, oh, I did want to talk about one more thing around the league just briefly before we get into the draft um, that uh, I did see on the Ravens website. And I don't want to give this too much airtime, but a, Raven, uh, a Steelers pundit did say that he that he believes that the Baltimore Ravens window is now closed mm. uh, after losing the defensive coordinator and multiple pieces on the defense. His basic justification was that the defense will never be as good as it was last year. And the the AFC as a whole and the division has gotten better. So they do not have enough to take advantage. They, they didn't take advantage of it then. And now they don't have enough to, to, you know, recover from a, a defense that's clearly going to regress. Glenn, what say you about wow. all of that? Well, well, first of all, anybody writing about uh, that kind of stuff right now is kind of silly unless they're just trying to, you know, put the get, content out there, baby. Yeah. Get reaction. I, I get that. I will say, um, 
with every year this happens to the Ravens where every team around them signs the shiny new toys and they look like their roster is ready to compete. But where, what, what do we see at season's end? We see the Ravens right up there competing for the number one seed in the AFC. And I don't think that's going to change as long as, you know, they focus on the guys that we lost. How about yeah. let's focus on the core, the group that we still have here. That's very young. That's still very talented with Kyle, with Kyle Hamilton, with Lamar Jackson. I mean, just on the offensive side of the ball with Linderbaum and 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 uh, and and Zay Flowers and Likely and Andrew. I mean, everybody's acting like the cupboard is all of a sudden bare. Yeah, Derrick Henry, some guys. Yeah, I mean, both sides of the ball is still just absolutely covered with talent. So I get some of the apprehension about wanting to say the defense is going to be as good as it was last year when you consider what they led in all those categories with the changeover, but. To say the team is window is closed is nonsensical because I think it's uh, reasonable to think the offense is going to be better. I yeah. mean, we lost one of our top eight pass catchers, and that's OBJ. Our offensive line needs some work. I'll give you that. But Derrick Henry, you can't tell me that's not a hell of an upgrade. You're now right. in year two of an offense instead of year one. You yep. can't tell me that's not a huge advantage. Zay's so, going to be better. Bateman's going to be better. Likely's right. going to be a bigger piece of the offense. Like, All you know, Lamar is going to be in year two, like you said with with Munkin. So dude, there's so much there. I just think that this is someone that is upset because currently as it stands, they are in a windowless dungeon. And so they don't even have a window to close. Yep. Right. Like they don't there have a go. quarter, you know, they don't, right. I mean, it's just, let's call it what it is. They don't have, they have a, a quarterback, door. right? Like they're recycling guys at this point. I mean, they haven't been in the playoffs and yeah, he even brought it up. The Ravens, even as good as they were last year in Lamar's career, he's like one and three against the Steelers or something like that or whatever. Two of those games didn't even count, right? Like we had already mm -hmm. tied Meaningless. up the division or, or whatever, or the, the, yeah, the division. So it's just, I don't know. It, it seemed he was stat baiting to me and seemed kind of jealous and bitter and petty. But ultimately I agree with you. Look, if there's two things that happen in the season, the Ravens are going to find success. Um, in fact, I've made a very long-term bet on this. Uh, I believe the Ravens will always have double-digit wins if Lamar Jackson is healthy for an entire season and if John Harbaugh is the head coach. I don't even need to see more outside of that. If those two are together, they can pile mm -hmm. a, a winning formula. Now, I'm not saying you don't need other guys, but I feel like if those two are there, they can bring everyone else along. But yeah. I think head coach to quarterback combination, there's not too many better. And I think those two guys can produce double digit wins. Like, tell me that's not a successful season opportunity to get in the playoffs. You're out of your mind. That's right. right? Yep. So, no, I think it's crazy. Um, anyway, I wanted to bring that up because, oh, and he also talked about PQ leaving and, of course, signing with the Steelers. Devastating. So, uh, you know, you know how I feel about that. De devastating yeah. is all we need to say. Yeah. Dude, he uh, literally blocked all of Ravens media. Did he really? Yeah, it's All wild of... to me, dude. Hey, look, we were blocked way before it was cool. Right, we were the first. We started the trend. Way dude. before, bro. I mean. Like, we started the trend. I'm just Everybody's kidding. like, hey, we got blocked too. It's like, chill out, bro. Yeah. Two years we in first. this, dude. We were first, bro. Two <laughs> years in this. You guys are late to the party. No <laughs> yeah, doubt about anyway. It. I, yeah, I think it's, it's crazy. But, Glenn, is it time we transition to talking draft? You got some other stuff you want to? Oh, wait. Do you want to talk about their she rice stuff? You're talking about it. I think it's relatively yeah. intriguing. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, it's it's pretty nutty. I mean, uh, so if you guys aren't aware, uh, the wide receiver from the Kansas City Chiefs, rookie last year, heading into his second year, Rasheed Rice, uh, looks like he was involved in some sort of a street racing uh, DUI, is what I'll say. But uh, obviously, no charges have been brought to him yet. But he he's seen leaving a bar after he was posting on social media, drinking with friends and family. He leaves the bar. We later see a dash cam footage of a Corvette and a Lamborghini racing. There was a, a, a pretty bad crash. And then we see later uh, more footage from a, a bystander with their phone where we can see Rasheed Rice leaving with others from the scene. And it was reported from a, a person who was uh, you, a woman you can kind of hear off camera talk about how they emptied out the Lamborghini. There was uh, uh, allegedly weapons and, and possibly other other things getting pulled out of the vehicle. They get they get out of the scene of the crime. They run away from the scene. And the guy even asks the group of men as they're walking by him on the shoulder of what looks to be 
some sort of an overpass or a highway. He says, you guys just going to leave? And they ignore him and continue to walk. So I can only assume, and we talked about this, bless you. I, I Thank you. Again, this is an assumption. We don't know, but I can only assume someone leaving the scene would trying to avoid DUI would be the most logical assumption. Uh, but obviously, we don't know what's going to happen yet. But, man. These wide receivers driving fast. They don't want to just run fast, Jimbo. They want to drive real, real fast, too. Yeah. Uh, it's so crazy they would risk all this potential and future yeah. they have because they want to go fast in their in their Lambo. And you know what else is crazy to me? He's what? Was he a fifth-round pick? Was it that late? I thought it was higher than that. Fourth-round pick? I, I don't think so. I'm going to double-check. But okay. uh, draft. Hold on before I say this. Let's see. Oh, you, you think about Henry Ruggs, who's now in prison, who had a, the career in front of him, was the first-round pick, was this, arguably oh. the fastest player. He's now in prison because he killed someone and their dog yeah. uh, in a fire because of the same thing. But yeah. when was he drafted? No, my bad. He was 55. He was way early okay. in the fifth yeah. round. Yeah, second round. But even all that being said, Glenn, it's crazy. So they, I just also read this. He was leasing the Lambo. Oh, stupid. Why lease any? I don't know what anybody else's financial situation out there is, but me, I'm a Craigslist car buyer, <laughs> and it's like, dude, you're 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 a second round guy. Like it's not even you. You didn't even hit a big contract yet. You're leasing the Lambo, and you you own the Corvette that you were racing against. Oh, oh, I didn't even know that either. So you have a thing Ugh. for cars. Like you're anyway, I I don't know who's giving him, this guy any advice on his life, but he needs new people in his circle. If his family is letting him leave and getting a Lambo while potentially intoxicated, what are we talking about? You got to surround yourself with, with people yeah. that tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear, too. Exactly, man. What do I we mean? Who's yeah. letting this guy have keys to any vehicle? Right. Like it's so crazy to me. Um, Dude, if I really cared about somebody, let me tell you what, Glenn. I'll tell mm, you this straight up on the show. Tell me if you up, for dude. some reason wanted to get in your car and drive, mm -hmm. and I took your keys and you were ready to fight me, I would take a punch to the face rather than give you your car keys back. I would just let you haul off and hit me in the face, dude. Just now, that's a big deal because this is a money maker right here. That's right. That's right. And I would and never damage that money maker. <laughs> let me tell you. But but I'm I'm straight up. I see dude. what you're I'd saying. Punch yeah. me in the face. You know what yeah. I mean? Because if you care about somebody, why do you want, you know what I mean? Why do you put somebody in that situation? And even, even if you're not like, even if you don't care about him, if you're just looking at it as from a slimy point of view, he's not going to keep getting that money that you're hoping right. he keeps getting and taking you out to these that you're nice benefiting times. From. Yeah. Like all oh, that's going to go away too, buddy. So like, even if you don't even care about him, if you just want to be a better leech, then leech off of him better and don't let him get arrested. Like, this is exactly. – There's no way – I mean, he may avoid the DUI since he left the scene, but that adds to leaving the scene. I don't know. I don't know the rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just a bad, here. bad look. Not good. Not good. No. And Hollywood's – I don't know how Hollywood's feeling, but he must be thinking, well, that's some more targets for me. That oh, changes dude. the target share. Absolutely. Yeah, him and that rugby kid. Yeah. How, oh, yeah, I know. By the way – I don't buy into the rugby thing at all, but do you really think he's faster? Because I saw he was clocked at a higher speed. Now, he's not in football gear, yeah. but apparently he was clocked at a higher speed than Tyree Kill and all them in, in rugby is what I was reading. Well, I think that uh, – so I buy the speed. I do. I buy Benny the Hannon. speed. But this is the thing. So I had the opportunity to actually hang with a lot of guys that grew up playing rugby and – transition to football and the biggest part about it is the way that people use the pads it's it's you know it's a different it, rugby is crazy yeah. physical right but because you don't have the pads psychologically it's so different you don't have a weapon on your head right? right yeah and so it's just a different game i mean it's so different i don't know if you guys want some comedy so i coached lacrosse at the high school that haloti nada went to and played rugby at i think there's some stuff on youtube about haloti nada playing rugby in high in high school and it's hilarious Oof. so some of the best athletes we've seen in the nfl and certainly from the Polynesian region and heritage is because of rugby, right? Like mm -hmm. there's definitely the, the, a lot of translatable skills, but I don't know about the skill positions because there's more nuance to it than like wreck everything in front of you. I'm not saying there's not yeah. nuance to the boys up front, but you understand what I'm saying, right? Yeah. 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 So and also will it, will it be instinctual for him to right. use his pads in the way you kind of have to, if you're right. in the league, I, I did see a, 
a clip of a guy who uh, an American football player going and playing rugby, and he was absolutely wrecking dudes by just yeah. putting his and just going through people. Yeah, but not he's not going to be used to it. But I, I I do think it's at least interesting that you're searching all corners of the globe. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I I do I do kind of respect that. I like that. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, there he is. Here we go. Look at. Okay. So four four three. All right. So. Hey, look, not everybody does as well in the 40 yard dash. Yeah. Uh, what I was reading is is what he did. He was clocked at like in, in a game. In a game versus yeah, yeah. the best clocks in a game in the NFL. Yeah. And apparently he was faster. But and I think if I'm not mistaken, there might be more opportunity for you to really, really gain speed in a look you know what I'm saying dude. in a rugby game. Jordan, you just have more time. I yeah, totally and maybe wrong, there's more I open think, space. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, I think there's more continuous play. And so dude, yeah, if you already get that ball. Yeah, that's insane. That's fast, bro. Yeah, that's that's absolutely wild. Uh, I, but if you see the videos of him and like when he run when he's running routes, it doesn't look great. I wouldn't expect it to. It seems I like mean. it's like high, like he doesn't drop his hips and and stuff like that. Stuff that just takes longer to continue to perfect. He might get, you know, he might improve as that goes on. But I see him doing well. Special teams. Well, there you go. I mean, if nothing else, if he can at least become a quality special teamer for him, then yeah. Because special teams win. is the closest thing to rugby I think there is. That's a good point. You and know? maybe this new kick return. Yeah, I think it – right. Maybe the this other dude, The other dude that grew up playing rugby, who's the kid, the left tackle for the Eagles? Did he he's really? a seventh oh round pick. Oh, my God, he's huge. Yeah, he's massive. He's a seventh round pick. Yeah, he's a rugby player. Um, even heck? Falele has some rugby in his past. I mean, yeah. yeah that, that's insane. But I, I did want to get your take quickly on that Falele piece. I, I – DK pointed out that uh, the Ravens ran a ran like a quick little video. I think uh, it was Garrett Downing ran the video talking about the Ravens have uh, confidence in Falele being currently set as the starting right tackle. And I watched the video and I, and I heard Coach's comments when he talked about in the comments level, and I couldn't help but think that that was, I mean, I, more, maybe a bit more than Coach speak and that they're hopeful, but. What what uh, chances do you give of Falele getting the starting job uh, for the season? Man, I might be a like optimist to my death, Glenn. Mm -hmm. But I think there are some things that are worth noting that are in Falele's favor. Uh, one, uh, we've talked about this before. Very young as a football player, mm -hmm. right? Still very young as a football player. And so what that means to me is that if you have the drive, if you have the discipline, if you have the athleticism. You can quickly improve. Yep. Uh, I, I also think that there are physical gifts that he has that you can't teach, similar to Orlando Brown Jr. Mm -hmm. or you know other guys that are just absolutely like I think of Bryant McKinney, which is absolutely massive. Yep. Um, so I, I think that there's a chance he could be serviceable, right? DK thinks it's absolutely false. They're blown and uh, and uh, I'm 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 speaking as a proxy for DK. He's trying to say more, but uh, anyway, I, so what I'm trying to say though, Glenn, is that there's a chance this kid can improve. I know yeah. people have said he's slow. I know people have said, but that's something he can improve on and improve on quickly. I firmly believe that. Mm -hmm. I don't buy into the needs to lose the weight thing because if you watch, look at him. We at, if you remember this DK, we were at the AFC Championship game, Glenn, and we went down and and uh, when you guys were out watching the interviews with like Anquan Bolden and stuff like that. We were yeah. watching warmups and you watch Falele next to Morgan Moses and Falele carries his weight way better than Morgan Moses where Morgan Moses looks like a, what do you, what do you, what do you used to call this before Glenn? Like a, a frog standing straight on his hind legs. No ass. Yeah. yeah his you know pants are like, baggy in his ass. Yeah, yeah. Like nothing to him. And Falele is just an absolute tree just, trunk. Yeah. Ridiculous. You know? So I don't, buy but the question any... is, does he move quick right. enough? Right. So if he has to lose weight to, to get quicker then I get that. But I, I think that if that's your own, like that's your biggest concern, that's not a crazy concern for me if he's willing to put in the work. I think he's got a much better chance of success than Ben than Ben Cleveland because Ben Cleveland just simply doesn't seem athletic enough. Where mm. I don't get that feeling with Fall Lately. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Well, let's hope that if needed, that both of them guys are ready to go because it could very well come down to that. Uh, yeah. And even if they get add guys, it could come down to that due to injuries. Uh, last, last uh, question before we get into the draft. Wait, what, but how uh, are you feeling about it, though? I'm. I don't. I think it was all just 
coaches speak to try and motivate Filet. I don't think there's a lot of internal confidence that he could be the starting right tackle. Not to say that couldn't change, but I, I don't see, I don't think, I think they're prepared to, uh, to I, I don't think they think their right tackle is on the roster just yet. They're starting right tackle, but you never know. He could be one of those guys. We've seen it so many times where they just take a little bit while, a little bit longer to develop. And like you said, maybe weight loss will help with that first step. And because the thing I worry about is speed rushers, Tend, he needs help with, and I don't want a guy who where you have to constantly help at yeah. right tackle. I just, I don't want that. Uh, my guy cakes in the chat finally caught alive. live. Much love to the four ten fam. Yes, sir. It's been way too long, cakes. Seriously. Appreciate you jumping in here. It's been a long time, but uh, I gotta know, cakes. Are you a baseball fan too? Or is it just uh, just the Ravens for you? Because right now the O's are in trouble. They're down four one in the ninth. Um. But yeah, I'm just kind of curious. But shout out to Cakes. Appreciate your generosity as always. What's your take on this videos that have been circulating with uh, Zay Flowers off-season training with Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell? I think I saw Hollywood even in the in the tail end of the video. What's your thoughts on uh, on him training with those guys? You excited about it? I mean, on the field, great. Not my favorite group <laughs> him to be running with him i'm being honest like i don't know much about waddle or honestly about about uh hollywood seems Hollywood seems, seems yeah he seems pretty chill but like i don't know i wouldn't get to look this is just me like if he were my kid i'd be like maybe don't hang out with tyree kill too much yeah like yeah just he's got he's had some off the field issues you know what i mean like probably not the on the field sure i'm not here to judge a guy but if he were my son i'd be like just keep it on the field that's right you know that's type right. thing yeah, yeah. um but I, I mean, I think that's look anywhere he can go to, to extract techniques and skills and learn. The only way you get better is being around people that are better than you, right? I yeah. don't even know if all those guys are better than him, but certainly Tyree Hill's been incredibly successful. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, good. I mean, keep putting in the work, man. That's that, that's what I want to see. It's better seeing that than like coming into camp having seen nothing. I guess, right? Well, I think, any, like you said, anytime you're getting good quality work, and I'm assuming it's not just them. I'm assuming there's some sort of coach or like a private wide receiver coach that was yeah. out there. And, uh, yeah, Dude, that's working. the job. I should have gotten into that. If I could do it again. Dude, you could be a private running coach, bro. Dude, I've thought about it. You could do it. Hey, this is my pitch. Look, dude, I've been there because I can coach you because I've been there. Like, I wasn't a there pro. I wasn't a pro. You there know, you I, you know, I've been I'd sign you up, dude. dude. See if you can get drunk, Dr. Uncle Bob into shape. Oh, dude, we'll have him run a, a sub four marathon, baby. <laughs> no way oh. in hell. Oh, yeah. If, honestly, though, it just if he really wanted to do it, dude, oh, for sure. He, he might. He might. Okay. All right. Well, let's get into it and uh, let's see what we can come up with. Here, yeah, I'm though. excited for this. Now, the thing that's challenging is that we typically use PFFs. Yeah. But PFF is usually very different than a lot of the other draft. Uh, like uh, the, the sources where you can you can get the boards and see their big boards and how they rank players, they're usually pretty unique. So I was doing them both on here and elsewhere. Yeah. And getting vastly different results between huh. the two. So I'm going to try and even that out to where we kind of have a similar. Now, how are we doing this? You want me to run it? Am I running it? Yeah, that's fine. If you don't mind. I don't mind. I'll run it. I'll run it here. Let's see here. All right. So the basically the way the way I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to make it as accurate to what's really going to happen and not necessarily uh, who's going to be right in the long run. Like because sure. a, a lot of the, like PFF they're trying to be right as far as predicting guys and how they're going to be in the NFL. I, I don't really care about that. I care about accuracy right now for this portion because I want to know who's going before the Ravens pick. That's what I want to freaking know. Yep. Um, but let's set it up here. I'll throw it up. Uh, add to stage. And then, uh, yeah, there we go. All right. So three rounds. Ravens. I, I think this situation here is where I, I'm never, un, never sure. I typically go right the middle of the road for the public versus PFF, but maybe I should go all public. What do you think? One notch below. We'll give PFF a little nod. Little nod right there? No, like. Oh, I see what you're saying. Never mind. Yes, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. How about the rest? Do you want to take off randomness? 
take off randomness and let's also let's up the care for positional or sorry you have the right one draft for needs yeah i like that you up to that okay care for positional value i i mean i like that actually is where it's at because i think that you like you said we're trying to simulate the actual reality of things right yeah yeah exactly some teams are all about positional value some teams the ravens honestly don't care they've shown that that's fact you know what i mean like when they took kyle hamilton so i think this is good yeah now okay. do you have the right amount of rounds three yes all right cool three rounds i think i did or maybe did you I? did all seven did i do all seven we're gonna find out sure all right here are. we go starting the draft and I did like to see at the top there um, some of what I kind of expected to see. Okay, I did do three. Yeah, let's run down it real quick. So I do like to see that it's quarterback, 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 because that is the way I think it's going to go. Now, okay. whether or not a team trades down, I don't think they will, but it, it's possible that the Patriots could look at this year as like a, a, a redshirt year for themselves and for the coach and say we're, we don't like their the third quarterback. But I do think it goes quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. Uh, and then after that, I mean, who the heck? Dude, you knows? know what we should do? Let's just next time let's do the whole first round and like the actual whole first round. What we believe that way, we at least think what we know to be true is the is the you know what the Ravens we can have do that. Anyway, all right. See, I agree with you because you bring up a good point. There's a chance that the the Patriots choosing at 34, if I'm not mistaken, could want to hold tight and could trade out a third. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm sure there's going to be get their quarterback there, right? later. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a tough one there. All right. So wait, can, sorry. Can you go down one more time? I didn't get a good look at all those. Um, so chop Robinson goes the best corner. I think in a lot of people's minds, Kool-Aid is gone. Uh, the best center's gone. Bunch of tackles are going Jimbo. Yeah. A bunch, a bunch Rams, of them. Yeah. I mean, holy smokes. The corners have been absolutely picked up. JJ McCarthy dude, going to the Vikings. What do you think about that kid? Uh, I I like him. I like I just don't I don't know. He has to go to the right situation. I wouldn't mind the Vikings. I think Is he the nice next situation. Kenny Pickett? Oh, I don't think so. No? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. All right. So the Ravens needs. Let's sort it by needs here. Yep. All right. Let's go interior. Mm hmm Let's go offensive tackle. Mm-hmm. And we can put corner in there. Yeah, I'll put wide out on there. I'll put corner, and then I'll go edge. Is that fair? Yeah, fair. All right, that's the biggest, most glaring needs. All right, so yep. under that, look, this guy's intriguing me to me, Jimbo, because he is a big body guy, six foot four. Um, he's one ninety six. He's a good athlete. But what I don't like to see and what I, I continued to see when I would look into uh, uh, Mitchell here is that he doesn't necessarily play like a 6'4 guy. He's a bit more of a finesse guy. And I kind of want a bully out of a 6'4 corner, or wide sure. receiver. I want a guy who's going to go up and get those 50-50s and, and impose his will on a smaller corner or safety. I don't necessarily love a guy who's uh, – it look, look could do better at attacking the ball in the air. I don't like seeing that from a six. Yeah, no guy. basket catches. So even though I like him, I don't like him. I don't necessarily like him right there. Um, yeah. See, I don't like how this is so how it fell. It's but can well, you can, uh, go ahead? And I was gonna say I was gonna ask about the 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 tackles. We haven't seen a tackle yet. The well, Jordan three. Morgan is the guy who Draftplex has currently mocked to us. He, he believes in this guy. He's a big boy. He's 6'6", 320. But we picked him in the last one, so I didn't want to pick him in this. Yeah. One. You know, I, I thought that and was – And unfortunately, I think until he changed my mind, not that there aren't other possibilities, because a lot of it will depend on how the board falls, but I think this ends up being the guy. I know. It's so hard to get away from him because he's always here in PFF. But when I did other mocks and other ones – He's taken? Uh, no, Tyler Guyton was there. Like other, oh, I other, see. other tackles were available. Chop Robinson was available in a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, I took him in a couple of the mocks. Uh, but I did take Jordan Morgan in a lot of them because he's got a visit scheduled and he's in a position of need. And I do think, you know, there's a good chance he's going to be taken. Are we sticking and picking? This is my, this is who I can see. The like Kingsley. Kingsley. Yeah, no, I know. I just think Kingsley, so if they athletic. go Kingsley. 
I think they go, they trade back to get Kingsley. Yeah, you can trade back and get him. Can we take a look at him? Yeah. Yeah, let's he's take just, a look at what he's, he's just got. He's a very athletic guy. He's a big boy, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know they love athletic guys when it comes mm-hmm. to their tackles because they like guys that can get out and remove. And it's uh, most Xavier likely, Leggett is not gone, guys. He's still out there. He's still out and, there. And it's most likely that he's not that he's going to pass the character check. Oh, for sure. It's likely, you know. Yeah, let me see. I can't here. say that Leggett. about every BYU guy, but yeah, Leggett. feel good about this one. <laughs> Leggett's still available. And I like Leggett. Actually, I have him uh a little bit later in the draft circled, uh, maybe for the next round. The only thing it, it just man, I, I just I can't get on board with them taking a a, a wide, receiver wide receiver in the first round. Right. I just I can't get on board with it. They've done too much wide receiver in the first round lately, and it's not to me, even the top three area of need right now. So why, yeah, unless right. you've got a guy that's so much better than everyone right. else around him. Somebody crazy falls, you know, that's yeah, just like, unseen. I just um, don't see it. Um, and by the way, the, uh, the, the team is not allergic. I believe they still have drafted more wide receivers than any team since Eric DeCosta has taken over. Yeah. So the team is not allergic to taking wideouts, and I do think they will. I just don't think with the first pick when they just did it with Bateman, just did it last year with Flowers. I mean, did it recently with Hollywood. I mean, this is a lot of first round picks being right. wide receiver. To say they would do it again, I think is eh, I'm not a big I'm not I'm not so sure. Don C says, Great show, guys. Great chat. DK, please clip Jimmy's money maker comment. It would be funny at our next meet and greet. There you go, Jimbo. Well, you guys know intern Brad is back, so it might end up on Instagram. Um I don't know how any of that works, but somehow it could end up there. Yeah. But, well, uh, look, Glenn, I stand by my words. I would literally take a charge. What do you mean? I would oh. take the, the, the punch right to the face. Okay. But I'm not so sure if I got myself in trouble by just running my mouth that you would t- take that same punch. You know, like if I ran my mouth, got myself in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, not know. as willingly. Because you'd be like, that's it. I pray he probably deserves it. But I might try and do like the look over there, Glenn, run. <laughs> like hit the lights. Like I like might H try and like give you like a 15 second Mississippi, you know? To like get to hey, like that's get all I it. need, dude. That's all that's I need, saying. bro. I can just disappear. Because I know, okay, if I give you 15 seconds, I can distract these guys. And if I can scoot, I'll 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 catch up to you. But oh, yeah, you, for sure. You'll have enough distance to be out there, you know, and we'll be all right. So, you know, I won't run. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Just, just, uh, just pick up a weapon. That's what I say. <laughs> Glenn, Glenn just arm to yourself, jail, ladies and gentlemen. Arm yourself. Just okay? pick up a weapon. That's all you got to do. Great. Arm yourself. Look, I'm super disappointed that Chop Robinson's gone because I really wanted to take him with uh-huh. the first pick, and he was there for so many of my mocks earlier that I was doing because I was doing quite a few. Uh, yeah, yeah. What do you to- like about Chop so much? Well, I just love the the potential of how explosive he is. I, I love guys that until they learn their moves can rely on quick twitch it explosiveness mm-hmm. and can just flat out beat your tackle to the edge. And I have a ton of confidence in what Chuck Smith's already done with the past the current guys in the room. And if he got his hands on an athlete like Chuck like uh Chop Robinson, whew, I mean, I, I think this guy could be a premier rusher. And let's be honest, with seeing Clowney sign elsewhere, yeah. I know Coach Harbaugh talked up Ad- uh, Ajabo and, and Adafi Owe, and I like those guys, but I think we need more guys in the room, and I think we need some uh, – I, I like Kyle Van Noy, but I would not mind seeing some youth. Yeah, no, I agree. Some fresh hope. Well, look, right? if we're supposed to be competing, BP says we're supposed to be competing, dude. Are we supposed to be competing? Because if that's well, the I case – I already have a list, but we can – I got do- a list too. Well, let's just do this three together, and then we'll compare our, 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 uh, our draft picks – but let's do this three together. Now, really quickly, do you want to trade? If not, let's just go with the guy we like. I mean, I like, even though he's lower, let's just go with Kingsley, dude. Now, you know what? Uh, you like Morgan. I like Kingsley more than Morgan. All right. You do. As a player. Okay. Yeah, I, I like Man, Kingsley dude, better. where is this guy coming from, dude? Talking up a BYU or? Why? And my hate runs deep. So, you know, I like wow. it. Because yeah. the very few, th- it's like the Steelers. And BYU's right there. I might hate BYU more than the Steelers, Glenn. Dang. Low key. 
You know what? You know, you know what I like about this guy because what I'm looking for in the first round is a tackle. Is a guy who plays right tackle this year, but transitions to left tackle in the near hmm. future when okay. Stanley's gone. That I'm not necessarily looking for my right tackle. I'm looking for my left tackle who can play right for one season. That's fair. That's fair. That's what I I'm looking for. That far, but that's a great. And I like this have. guy. I like this guy for that purpose because I do think he'd benefit from that. But all right, so you go Kingsley, and I yeah. go and I go Jordan Morgan. All right, we're gonna put Kingsley on the board, but just know, guys, this is a competition. I took. Wait, Jordan wait, Morgan. wait. Oh yeah, yeah. This is my pick. Yeah, this is yeah. my pick in my actual one. But this one is not okay. Anyway, yes, I'll I'll reveal to you my three that I did on my own. And then Tariq Keek says, would they risk and trade up for Fashanu slash Alt? I, I I think they might. I mean, I know it's like it's counterintuitive because the Ravens typically like to acquire more picks and trade back and trade down. And you think with a deep a deep tackle draft that they could do that this year, still get a guy that they they believe. Because right, realistically, could start. if they were in this situation, they could trade back and get Kingsley. They could, you know, or or Morgan in in, in this situation. We just didn't uh, do it, but they could have certainly done it. They could have done it, but at the same point, I think Tariq, Tariq, I think they could. If they believe that that guy is a cornerstone type player, I think there's a shot they could do it. Because here's what they know they're, that's coming. Next year, they're getting the maximum. No matter what they do from here on out, as many players as they lost, they're going to max out comp picks at four. They're going to max it out. Even if they sign guys now, because they've lost so many, and you only can get max of four. So they have to sign five players to counter all that. So they know they're going to be they're going to have a ton of draft picks next year. So maybe they say we'll couple next year's four, you know, like like leverage some of next year's <laughs> picks, knowing you're getting four more comp, uh, comp picks next year. Uh, my man got the sniffles tonight, bro. Yeah, you don't know what happened. I was making some food with Henry, and he kept grabbing the flour and putting it on my face. Who? And Henry. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. And so, anyway, it's just flour on my face. Okay. Well, that's okay. You're allowed. You're allowed to have flour in your face. All right, let's move on. Second round. Let me see if any of my guys are here. I got I got a list over here to my right. Uh, all right. Okay. All right. So what what in the second round, you got your tackle. What's your what's your area of need? I should be sorting this by that you wanna you wanna attack here, Jimbo. Yeah, so for me, I'm going right to interior. As far as prioritizing things, I'm not done at the offensive line. Okay, fair. I'm what about keep... you? No, I think that's good. I'm going to keep I, – I, dude, every time I was doing this, I kept trying to find where I could get corner for value. Yeah. And, dude, I just never – I got a guy for you, my man. But you know what? I'm not going to reveal him unto you because unto, – Unto you. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. I like that. Well – I, I, yeah, because I never got one where I felt like the value is there. And I feel like, you know, the rate that I also like, like, I don't want, I want an yeah. outside guy. I want a guy that can play outside. I want a guy who can tackle. But I, man, oh, see, that's kind of crazy because this is a guy I like, dude, Christian Mahogany. Now, I like him more in the third round than I do in the second. But let me just tell you about old Christian here. Yeah. First of all, you know, he's a big physical guy. You know, that's what you like to see. He's a big physical guy. Um, he, he's he's just he's just built well you know what i mean he's yep. just built well with a and, barrel chest you know he's just a guy who likes to put you know put guys in the dirt is what i like about him now look at this dude look and plenty of sand in the pants you know what i'm saying you want sand in the pants when you're talking about your offensive <laughs> line you don't want no baggy back back draws okay that's not what you want but no uh, I, I like this guy i just i think I like I'd like him more in the third round um, than I do in the second, but I'd I'd be okay with it, I guess. But is there any uh, anybody else you want me to to look? Yeah, up? well, sure? I mean, if you go back up to the top, I can tell mm -hmm. you where I, I want you to click on this guy and read about him a little bit. Keep going, okay. Keep, yeah. So let's talk about Christian Haynes. You like Christian? I, okay, let me see. I did look into Christian. I looked. Yeah. Into so him. there's a couple of things that just stick out to me that seem like Ravens. If you go to him, very first thing right there, four years starting right guard. Mm -hmm. So he has a true position, and he started for four years. But yeah. He's also a big boy. He's only slightly smaller than the other guy we just looked at. Uh, he showed leadership. He has good tape. He has you know starting potential and measurables. Uh, I'm not saying this guy is gonna be a, a career Pro Bowler. But, you know, he, I think he has the ability to, to, to be a Kevin Zeitler type 
career guy. Wow. Um, okay. And look, that's nothing to shake a stick at. So, no. no. Um, yeah, I, I think Christian that this Haynes. is a solid pick. Wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. I I just think he's a more of a smaller guy in the sense, like I think he'd be good. I just don't know if he fits what we're looking for, man. The big guy. Oh, well, he's only ten pounds and one inch shorter than the other guy we just looked at. Hey, look, one inch can make a big difference, Jimbo. Okay. I guess. All right. All right. <laughs> ask Ask Tyler Linderbaum how the the sub three hundred pound offensive lineman life is going. I'm just him. saying. I'm looking at what we do typically. Yeah. At guard. And I don't know if he's got enough sand in the pants, as they say. You know what I mean? I think he's all right. I don't know if they got Wouldn't sand. you rather have a guy that can move, though? Because, like, put weight is cheap. Like, that's easy. I guess so. I guess so. You know so. what I mean? That's just yeah. my thought. Like, yeah. anybody, look, look, anybody in the United States can gain weight. You live long enough here, you're going to gain some tell weight. You. Let me tell you, you're not wrong. You know okay? what I'm saying? So it's like. Your boy can put on the LBs. Anyway. How about, I mean, any of these wide receivers catching your eye? No, I'm just, I'm with you where like is a value thing for me at this point. And, and I didn't, I wasn't in love with any edge guys. So yeah, I don't know. We can take your guy though. If you want your, your guard. No, 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 no. That's okay. See, the thing is, it sucks is that, um, like oh, we have the least sexy draft ever so far. Yeah, like, but no, look, welcome to the, to the Ravens. Is that what they do? Is that what they do? Actually, you know what? Here, let me check one guy. I actually, I didn't even, I didn't even check him yet. I have a guy written down right here to the side here. Let me see. Ah, he's gone. Dang it. Who are you looking for? Uh, uh, Braylon Trice. He's an edge. Mm. Let me see. I like, here he is right here. Yeah. I liked Braylon. I I thought Braylon would be a good ad later on. Um, 6'4", 270, you know, he's a powerful guy. I think the Ravens like when they get edges later on is guys that they know can at least, at, at least can hold up in the run game while they can fi- figure out their pass rush game. And Yeah, I'm only going to one team on defense in the Pac-12, and it ain't the Come Huskies. On, on, nah, but bro, like for on. real, for real. There's only one team that cares about defense in the Pac-12. Yeah, but it doesn't mean you can't find good players there, okay? you come, Remember, Brandon... I mean, uh, Travis Jones was at UConn when they won like hey, you're right. zero, zero games, dude. And this That's guy a good point. turned out. But for some reason, I'm going to meander down to the SEC. <laughs> I'm looking for an edge. <laughs> meander. I love that. No, I like this guy, dude. I like this guy, and it's my pick. So, get. oh, I can't. He's already been taken. Shit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Dang it, dude. All my guys. Where else dude. you want to go? Well, I had, I had a guy, Fisher, that I like, but he's – I, I like him, but he's uh, he's a tackle, and you just took a tackle. Oh, dude, that's all right. Let's double up. What's the problem with that? One I'm of these guys going... can play inside. I mean, I guess, but I, I, I like – this was the guy I was thinking if they go – see, I went chop – in this particular draft, I went chop in yeah. the first round. I went uh, uh, Blake Fisher in the second round because I think he is the type of guy that could, uh, that could start day one at right tackle for us. And – excuse me, not – and he's not young. Himself. Look at this kid. And that's another thing that stood. I'm glad you mentioned that because Eric DaCosta talked about that, how age can sometimes be a big factor on where guys are slotted because it's just, yeah. it's just fact when a guy's younger, he has more time to, to develop. So yeah, that I think does play a player, a, play a role. And I like Blake Fisher, but Dude, let's man. take, I mean, I don't know if you, if you don't want to be too boring on the draft, we can take someone else, but I like it. All right, I'm taking it. Because, he, you know look, what? we've said it a million times. J.O. played guard. Nobody's above it. Yeah, and you know what? It's more so like guys that I I think, because we're doing this like kind of meshed right now together. Yeah. Um, I like that. I, I really like that guy. I, lo- I really – oh, look at my guy. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. That's the guard I like right there. Yep. Right on top. Christian Mahoney. My guy's but- gone, isn't he? What's yours? Uh, the The Ooh. kid out of UConn. Oh yeah, he's gone. Yeah, he's is gone. he? Yeah. But dude, I like this guy a lot too, Dominic Puny. Yeah. I think is how you pronounce his name. I really like this guy. If they have to try and find tackle help later, he's later. a big boy. Yeah, like if they can't, if they don't find the the value early on, um, I I think this guy is more of like a, a guard that can move 
I think he's more of a guard. Uh, and in fact, if I remember correctly, DraftFlex had him very highly rated as an interior guy. Let me see here. Uh, guard here. Yeah, he has oh. him. He has him right now as a rounds two to three guard. Okay. So if you're getting him at this, it's just a good value, I think, if you're getting him where you're getting him. It's 6'5", 320. He's right. a big boy. You put him in at guard. Or if you're not this year, he's a development guy that uh, maybe Voorhees is the guy for this year. But, but uh, you know, we'll kind of wait and see. But. Dude, how insane would it be? How crazy would the Baltimore Ravens fan base go if the Ravens went tackle, tackle, tackle? Um, Knowing yeah. that they're going to put some guys at guard, stuff like that. But, you know, I mean, those were their first three picks. Yeah, that they would be furious. I also like yeah. Patrick Paul. It's another guy yeah. I wrote down. Um, well, why don't you look at this kid? I know you've been looking for a corner. Jerry and Jones. I like Jerry. Okay, let me look up Jerry. Dude, look at this. Holy Six crap. Six foot seven. Yeah. He's a big boy. All right, Jerry and Jones. Let me see what it's Jerry is. J-A-R-R is, is the way he spells it. Oh, oh, I can spell J uh, Jones. Oh, and then I just drafted him. Oh, geez. <laughs> Take a look at this guy. Hopefully, I can still click on him. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. Oh, that's funny. I can't. Oh, we can go well, back to see. him. Did they like it? That was our best pick of the draft. B plus, baby. B yeah. plus. I no, like him. I like him a lot because you talked about slotting, like being able to adjust or play a position early and then moving to a different position. He's an outside guy, but his last year in college, he had a lot of success at slot. And so if you, if you keep Brandon, Brandon Stevens on the outside, you keep Marlon on the outside, he's, he's big enough and he's got experience at outside. I think he could come in and bring some immediate value as we sure up the, that slot position, because we kind of have, you know, if Marlon ideally is on the outside, we know Marlon can play the slot very well, but we want him to stay outside. Right. Oh, for sure. And so my thought is that, like, you have our Darius Washington, you have Pepe, you have, you know, some of these guys that play on the inside, but this kid is bigger. Uh, he's certainly taller, and he's had success at the college level uh, at, at doing that role. And so, like, I mean, it just, I feel like it could be a nice way for him to transition in. And then potentially, if he shows growth and we do let go of Marlon, he could, I'm just saying potentially, possibly, right? Like he could play on the outside as well. So that was kind of my thought here. Yeah, no, I mean, I think I think the Ravens are no doubt going to add a corner at some point. Yeah. It's just where they get the value uh, is, is the question. I like to see he didn't drop any interceptions. He only had three, but three's not bad in college level for one no. player to get at the corner yeah. position. Maybe at safety, you, you have maybe have some more opportunities. But three, three picks and zero drop picks. As right. a corner, I like to see that because what drives me crazy, like you get one opportunity, maybe a game to get your hands on a ball as a corner. And if you can't make that, take advantage of that, it's like, it's amazing the difference to so take advantage of that one opportunity versus if you don't, and that opportunity may not come back again for, for, for weeks uh, or ever. So yeah, uh, depending on how long you get, you know, to how long a leash you get, but I like reliable tackler. I like seeing that. Uh, I'm not mad about that, but yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of good things to this, to this kid's game at, at this spot in the draft. Yeah. At, uh, well, at, at the spot we were talking. Yeah, yeah, um, sorry. Back exactly. Then. But I, I see in this one. Oh, and this one, Kool-Aid is available, dude. We I've never had one. Just a little bit, right? Huh? We had the random, randomness up just a tick. You no, know, in this one, I turned randomness completely off. I oh, just wow. redid Look it. Look at that. He was still on the board. Yeah, I just took randomness completely off. This guy... I mean, obviously the Alabama connections uh, wouldn't hurt, but yeah, he started as a true freshman for Nick Saban. Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> I mean, just that alone, and when you think about you know, kind of an old school guy, and and man, yeah, that's that's pretty impressive stuff. But this guy, if he's available, I want Kool Aid McKinstry on my team. I mean, you talk about, I mean, this is this is a number one type corner. And you add that to that secondary, holy smokes, that would mm -hmm. be terrifying. And then, yeah, we want Marlon to stay outside. But what if we had a guy outside that was right. that good that could say, right. you know so you what, get Marlon, all three of them on the field. Go anywhere you want. And yep. Exactly. Brandon Stevens. I mean, I just every time every time I hear about people talk about it, I heard somebody pitching a show or pitching a um a topic for uh before they were heading into commercial, they said, Who's this year's breakout? A player for the Ravens last year was Brandon Stevens. This year, who would it be? 
It's like, man, it's a beautiful thing to hear, man. Oh, you know? it is. It, all I got to do is call me up, dude. Is that all it is? That's all. I'll give you next year's breakout. <laughs> yeah, man. Just got to give you a call. I really like him. Uh, but I also, what what's your thoughts on, on Chop? Oh, is he gone? Hey, he's gone. Dude, I did so many mocks. He was always there. First two we do here. Oh, um, you know what, Glenn? Oh, I knew it. I knew it. He's a Nittany. Is it because he's a Nittany Lion, bro? Is it because? Come on, man. I told you, I only want I only want one, <laughs> one conference. One conference for Edge, okay? That's it, huh? Definitely. No, no. I mean, look, you got to take the kid as an individual, but uh, he's young. He's super physical. Um, I got to do some more. I got to do some more study on this kid if you think he's truly going to be available. But um, look, I just don't want to doff it away again. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm only human. I categorize things the way that I categorize things. He is associated with the doff it away because they went to the same school. I've got to disassociate them in my mind. I have a simple brain. Well, look, remember, Micah Parsons went there too. True. And that couldn't guy. Be any, couldn't be any different. <laughs> Come on, man. He's re that guy's really good. So yeah, uh, it's crazy because he doesn't look nearly as athletically gifted as Adafe, like walking off the bus. I'm not saying he doesn't look gifted, but like, yeah, he's just Adafe's I mean, just, just looks he like could be a he figure. could be a, a sculpture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's he's a freak show when it comes to he might have been better physically. off getting into like bodybuilding or something. You know what? I'm I'm gonna quickly. I'm taking. Over, I'm just gonna hey, quickly do that and see what happens because yeah, I yeah. want Kool Aid. Oh, I if Kool Aid's there. DK, he's a number one. I don't care what you have to say about number two. He's a number one corner. And look, <laughs> we're not going to forget Kool-Aid's name, okay? So uh, Don C says, I don't know if this mock draft gave us much insight, but it sure was a great time, guys. Glenn Martin, I think we got some insight out of this. I hope so. Look, we were we were expecting a guest tonight. Um, we're going to have to edit the title again. Dang it. <laughs> Dang it. Um, so we were expecting uh to have some some help breaking this draft down, but uh yeah, we didn't we didn't we didn't get the help tonight. But if we did, uh, appreciate the generosity, Don C. And yes. I, I'm at least glad that you're being entertained, if nothing else. Look, since I went Kool-Aid, we'll go Christian in, with the second pick. We'll get your I, guy. I, Christian I, Haynes. And then let's let's take Jerry if he's there again. Nah, no, nah, you only get one pick. Wait, but we both liked him, I thought. Nah, I don't like him anymore. Really? Uh, only because you liked him too much. Wait, we well, just double down to the offensive line then and take yeah, the Yeah, I'm thinking Puny might be the or, guy. Okay. Either just Puny take the or, other guard. Or Paul, I do. I do. Like I, I don't other. like this kid. Just reading his stuff. You don't like him? All oh, right. Yeah, like the bad posture, the pad level. He was a Ju I don't know. Juco <laughs> I don't know. kid. I don't know, no, no. Okay. All right. I can move off of him. I'm not in love with the guy. You know. We'll go with yeah. mahogany. There we go. I like that one better. There's our that's our draft. Dude, Let's see two what they guards. Said. We two got guards, Ben bro. Ben Grubbs and uh and uh Marshall Yonda all over again, dude. Let me see. Oh damn! What up, son? <laughs> say something about our draft. Say something. <laughs> Hold up. Check that out, dude. Dang, dude. Smells of rich mahogany. <laughs> I, li I like Christian Mahogany in that spot. If we would have just went tackle with number two, I think we would have been in really good shape. You know what I mean, Jimbo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look. Yeah. Falele is the guy, apparently. That's true. They feel good about him. That's what yeah, they said we'll on their website. So they say on their website. <laughs> it must be true. There we go. Well, look, Glenn, I think that was fun. I can tell you what time flew by. I didn't realize it was 9-18. Yeah, yeah, it did. It dang, it did go by quick. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, we didn't. Uh, we didn't find our guest, or we didn't have our guest tonight. But all right, next time we're gonna make it up to you next time, guys. I appreciate yeah. everyone who came out and spent some time with us. I love the activity in the chat. Yeah, man. Uh, Terry hates our draft. You know what? I, I knew Terry would hate our. Wait, draft. does that mean nasty good? I'm gonna guess bad. Like that nasty was a nasty usually good, draft. But like no, that? and Terry, I thought he would. I thought he would have wanted a, a wide receiver. So I, I didn't think Terry would like this. Uh, yeah. Dang, D minus from Baltimore. Get up. Come on, be a little nicer. Look, I would have went tackle with number two. That was Jimmy's pick. It um, was. Um. It was. Jeremiah says we are not hired. Damn, dude. That's okay. Look, people can oh. say what they want to say. I'm not. You know. 
I'm, I'm standing on business. I got you. Okay. Appreciate Tanja. Always. He, I mean, Tanja's always here. Adansi, always here. I mean, just legends. Yeah. Absolute but, legends. But look, Lisa and legends. I'm just going to defend myself really quickly. Just remember that everyone was complaining the AFC Championship game about Lamar's lack of time. Everybody was complaining about John Simpson's penalties all year last year. We just got rid of Kevin Zeitler. Like, what do we do? We have no one at guard. Don't give me Ben Cleveland. And when our cupboard is bare and you got mm -hmm. your wide receiver out there and Lamar's running for his dang life, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. don't complain about it because this is what you wanted. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, everybody, everybody. We uh, got Voorhees. Stop it. Stop everybody. it. He hasn't played a down in the NFL. That's true. I still like Voorhees. I, I, I'm hoping. Yes, but he hasn't played football in the NFL. He's been I'm injured hopeful. since his sophomore year in high school. <laughs> Look, I just know that people may complain about drafting O linemen, but they are the same people who will complain like hell when Lamar's running for his right. life and there's no holes for Derrick Henry to run through right. and he's getting stonewalled at the line. Uh, I I hope Ben Cleveland turns out to be a great player, and I hope Voorhees does as well. But I don't think any of us know if that's going to be the truth. So, uh, better keep the cupboard stocked in case you have to turn elsewhere. Uh, I, I do think it might be a little crazy to think that they would go back-to-back -back guards, but, hey, you never know. BPA, baby. Best player Amen. available. Amen. Kyle um, Hamilton, perfect example. But that's all it's it for us tonight, folks. I uh, just borderline woke up my son, so uh, it's probably about a good time to uh, end the show. Yeah, you did get a little noisy there. But thanks for everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, everything, everyone. We'll see you guys in a couple days.